Hi and welcome back to the Creation Station, everybody. It's a beautiful, oh my God, it's 12, 11 a.m. It's Sunday, early morning, Pasadena, California at the Creation Station. I couldn't help myself but wanting to report to you about a couple of new findings I'm making in this new production I'm working on. This is one of the coolest projects and a brilliant idea by my friend Paul Nowell, a master trombonist who invited me to play not only play, but also engineer his new album, which is, believe it or not, utilizing a rhythm section that consists entirely out of Band in the Box. Yes, you will not believe the sounds that Band in the Box can come up with now. So just out of fun, Paul decided and asked me, uh, would you like to participate in a project that involves just that? And the only other instrumentalist in there is going to be you. I'm like, oh, well, I better hone my jazz chops then. And um, so we're having a lot of fun. This is actually a production where it's only Paul and Ben in the Box. Nobody else. And since it's only a very sparse instrumentation, I decided to work a little bit with dedicated spacings and reverbs in order to fill the space musically as if these guys were all standing there live in a room. You tell me if this doesn't sound live. Here we go. It sounds pretty live, right? So um, let me show you what's under the hood of this particular production, especially the trombone. First of all, let me show you the trombone soloed out by taking this channel. This is the master trombone channel. Below that, we have something called a trombone trigger that I'll explain in a second. Bone microphone number two we don't need. Let me uh, make that inactive. That's the master output that's got level rides on it. Plate smacks, very important. And what else? That's the whole deal. Oh, and then, yeah, there is this guy here involving that plugin that some of you may know. Let me drag this over here. And uh, let me explain to you what everything does. First of all, solo it out on the trombone with all effects on. Sounds pretty much like there's just a plate on it, right? Wrong. Well, what's on there? Okay, let's let me turn all the effects off. So you can hear the room around his microphone was already obscuring the direct signal a little bit, but in a really musical way. So what that did with transient uh, enhancement, uh, a little bit of sonic maximizer for treble, for a natural musical way of getting treble, um, a little bit of emulation of a, believe it or not, a recording of Bob Brookmeyer. So we're emulating an EQ here. Um, removing clips with the classic clipper here, and then just a gentle compression on the DBX. That's what's on the dry signal. So let's play that back. So that brings the signal just a little bit closer. And now I have the opportunity to build a musical room around that, that's stereophonic. And in the process of doing that, I came across the idea of just duplicating this track twice and making a stereophonic track out of these two duplicates. Um, and let me show you what that sounds like. It sounds exactly like the dry track. There's some panning on it, which I'll explain in a second. Listen to this. So that's just like the dry signal, right? But now I've got some EQ on it that makes it sound like this. Mm -hmm. 
So obviously you see there's a huge amount of filtering going on all the way up to 830 hertz. And then there's this guy. And this pushes the signal into the room slightly more stereophonic. And I can even angle it. Listen to what happens if I angle the studio. Let me turn the direct signal back on and move this signal. And by the way, of course, this only works with delay compensation on. It's logical. But here, check this out. This is what happens when I have them both on and I'll pan around so you can see the effect that this very subtle addition of a dry signal has. So when you change directions, you almost don't hear much of a difference. That's why I wanted to go a little bit more extreme. That's why I came up with the solution of literally panning the track to the right. Because in the sound field of this recording, there is a guitar standing in the left side of the pan field. The trombone should be appearing almost center, but it can have the room echo come back a little bit from the right field. So that's why I have it panned over here. And now let me turn the master channel back on, trombone. So my attention still goes absolutely center, but there's just a little spaciousness around it. All right, that's the first thing. Now let me show you what else got added on to the sound. We've got a little ocean way over here. You guys know this plugin. This is absolutely sensational. Um, it's a it's a hog, so it takes a lot of processing power, but it's worth every little bit of it. Let me shut the Abbey Road plugin down and show you. I've got three microphones open, one of them louder than the other, which is the near one, in the drums two setting. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> Let me exaggerate. Also, just air. It's just a beautiful musical sounding air, but I'm using it fairly, um, fairly subtle, just at zero dB here. Once again, let me play it back and then drive it up. So by these amounts that I'm using these things, they just create air. You know, you're not really able to tell that there's any artificial processing going on unless you are a incredible genius, which you probably are when you watch. If you watch this video, you probably are a professional engineer. But anyways, so um, let's add on the sweetness and that's illusions. Illusions I love. Right over here, that's my setting. Pretty much standard setting, but watch what it does. See, that's uh, only 1.59 seconds with practically no pre delay, only 10 milliseconds of pre delay on the actual structure of the reverb. There's a strong delay in the echoes, which are super subtle in this setting. Uh, let's see, what else do we have on this? No EQing. That's the chambers from Chamber of Illusion uh, from the setting, and you'd be happy to copy this, of course. All right, um, one last thing. Since I like the smack that you get from a plate to the right and left of the signal. So if it's not directly in the center, but audible that it spatializes the signal, you know, opens it up, 
That's why I love those plates. But I only wanted to hear the smack of the plate and not necessarily the long tail of it. So I created a little bit of a wild setup here, uh, which is called plate smack. Let me turn that on. The, um, this is only the dry signal with the, what I call the plate smack. Let me show you what's going on. This is a gated channel because there's strong amplification on it. So I gated out so that all the breaths wouldn't be thrown into that particular um, room. There's also, by the way, some surgical removal of one uh, particular frequency that was bothering me. It was around about 1100 hertz here, which with the C6, you can do up to a Q factor of 60. That's super surgical narrow cut, which is wonderful. Like a ringing snare or something like that. You can just notch out, it's phenomenal. Uh, and then we have the Abbey Road plates on a super short setting and a special side chain ducking signal. Let me explain what that is. But first I'm gonna play. Okay, that's that's sort of like the afterglow of the plate, which is very nice and neutral sounding, once again. Also spacious, right? So um, now that we have all these, oh, I wanted to explain this, uh, the side chain ducking. Here's what's going on. Take a look at the, where the master track is which is this yellow track or golden track up top here. And I duplicated that track. So this is also the trombone track and delayed it and used it as a side chain duck. So you can see that as the trombone plays, the reverb, the plate smack here with the Abbey Road plates comes through full force. But the moment that next note comes in, it ducks it really strongly. Watch how much it gets ducked. <laughs> So that's a lot. We're looking at 12 decibels, but you get most of the attacks coming through. So the spaciousness of the attacks of each phrase comes through. And surprisingly, I didn't expect it to work incredibly well throughout the entire song. It does. So let me turn all the things back on. Here is the trombone track with the plate smack is on. Ocean Way is on, and Illusion's on. That is, oh yeah, and the Abbey Road is also added, and the Abbey Road Reflection, which was panned to the sides on. Here we go. So now you can hear that the trombone took a step back into a room, but it's a musical environment. So let me turn the whole production back on and watch what happens now in context. So that is the whole process. That's several steps of processing the signal to put it into a musical environment. And uh, I really like how it sounds. And Pauly got back to me and he said, I really love the sound. We need to do that with the other songs as well. So I got some digging to do with some of the other songs we already recorded, which is a lot of fun. That's all I got for now from the Creation Station here. I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about the subtler reverbs and spatializations that can be done with these processes, which are fairly new. You know, some of these things like the Abbey Road thing that didn't exist five years ago. You know, I think it came out about two and a half years or three years ago. And um, they get denser and better and more musical. They don't sound so sterile and comb filtery anymore like they did in the beginning. Um, so they're becoming usable for processing. You know, imagine what happens if you take a nylon string concert guitar, uh, you take the dry signal, duplicate it, throw it into Abbey Road Reverb, and then move it around spatially where you want it before you add your plate reverb 
on whatever gives you the bounce back, the breath from the room, so to speak. So that was it. Um, if you found this helpful, please subscribe to the channel, help out my channel, and um, uh, give it a like if you will, and uh, leave a nice comment if you feel motivated to do so. That would be awesome. Um, can't wait to get back to you with the next video. I'm just going to bounce around between instruments, engineering, instruments, engineering, because I've got so much ground to cover. And the channel will be, uh, there's already 40 videos there. So you have a lot of stuff to check out uh, regarding engineering, virtual instruments, plugins, and so forth. So that's it. Stefan Obraff signing out from the Creation Station. God bless. Stay safe. Stay creative. Stay at it. God bless. Bye.